Hey everyone, uh, today we're going to go over part 3C, which is the um, coal pattern. So in the last one, we looked at a list item and coal index, but today we're going to learn coal pattern. Instead of using the points, instead of using the, just getting one point or just eliminating one point, we're going to eliminate a series of points through a pattern. So we only took out one point and use that one point and this one and then this one we took out a point just one single point so the way we're going to start this is we're going to start the same way i'm going to type it all out uh, i would highly recommend not to copy and paste the script it is the same um but it does get confusing so i wouldn't copy and paste it so please don't copy and paste it, it just makes it's harder for you to learn and if you type it again over and over you're eventually going to learn and you're going to learn very it's going to be very beneficial just trust me uh this is how i learn and I'm glad I didn't copy and paste it because it really confused other people that were trying to learn, uh, other students, copy and paste it, and they always um, were very confused. So this is the way I learned, and I would try it uh, just for the sake of learning this program. So construct, construct point. So you got the XYZ point. So I'm just going to do a move. We're going to do a move in the x direction alright and then just do a series one and then just plug it into here and it's already set to 10 and 1 like by default so I'm just not gonna plug it in from here but if you do have different numbers than 10 and 1 up here then change it to change uh, just all I have to do is literally just drag it all the way down there I'm just not going to do it because for the sake of this video. So we're going to do move again. We're going to move it in the y direction. And we're going to move it the same amount of times. Five. Plug in this. And plug in this. So as you can see, it ended up being basically the same as this kind of first half we have right here. So now we're going to learn is coal pattern. So basically if we want to eliminate things in a pattern, we can do that now. So we're going to do a call pattern. As you can see, a call pattern looks a little different than the other one, other two. This one has a list, indices, and a wrap. This one also has a list, index, and wrap. So it has three components. This one only has um, two, as you can see. So it has list, like normal, and then it has call pattern. And right now, if we hover over it, it says false false true true and you're like what does that mean that I don't understand what that means so if we look at a pa uh, panel real quickly so we'll just throw a panel here and actually we're gonna use two just for the sake of this plug this in here scroll it down plug this in here scroll this down it'll be zero through nine as you can see so let's say we want to eliminate Right now, if we read off of this, it's going to say false, false, true, true, right? Let me move this up so you guys can see it. False, false, true, true. So if we look at this panel, I'm going to zoom in real quick. It's basically saying false, false, true, true. Now, what does that mean? False means basically eliminate, and true means keep. So basically saying it's eliminate this, eliminate this, uh, keep this, and keep this. And then it rewraps again. So it basically does the same type of command over and over so false false true true then it goes back again false false true true and then false false so by the time so when we plug this in it's going to only have uh four points so let's check that out real quick we'll just throw a panel on here and it has four as you can see zero through three this one has nine so so that's how it works so we're going to basically do a pattern of just um, instead of doing this tr false false true true pattern we're going to do a uh, true false pattern and then it'll repeat itself by doing true false true false and etc so let's do that right now let's do a pan so in order to sorry in order to change these uh, false false true true where it responds in a series of um, just two numbers being one is true and zero is false. So let's do that real quick. 
Uh, in order to insert these numbers, you want to insert them in a, in a, way, in a way through panels. So we're going to do a panel, and we're going to plug this in. Not yet, actually. We're not going to plug that in yet. So we're going to says double click to edit panel content. So let's double click it. Now let's do one, enter zero. So it reads as the one being true, right here, and the zero being false. So right now we have our one and zero. When we plug it in, it should be good, right? No, it's going to turn red. It's going to not understand what's going on because the text is not reading correctly. So it's going to be like data conversion failed from text to boolean. So Let's, we're like, okay, I don't really know what to do after this. I put in the numbers, it should have worked, right? Well, sort of. So let's check out the panel. Let's right click it, and it has all these other features. Um, what you want to do to fix this is you want to make it look something like this. Like it has a branch, like these have branches and then a series of numbers. So let's do that. So what we all we have to do basically is just uh, uncheck this multi line data. So all you have to do is click this, and it'll work, and it creates it as a branch. So as you can see, it's now working. Instead of, it'll be true, false, true, false, true, false. So it's working for that. So that's the cold pattern for that. Now, I did this for the top part, and I want to, my goal here right now is just to make this zigzag pattern. So just this type of zigzag articulation happening right here. Sorry, like this. So basically, it's, that's basically just the inverse of the selection of points. So basically, I want this point to be selected, this point to be green, this point to be green, this point to be green, and so and so on and so forth. So it creates a, a zigzag pattern. So let's do that real quick. So I have the bottom geometry done, and I just want the top geometry. No, sorry. I have the top geometry done, and I want the bottom geometry. So let's do that real quick. Or the top points, bottom points, whatever you want to call it. So call pattern. All we have to do is plug in this bottom part into the list. We'll throw in a panel real quick. Double click to edit panel content. And then we'll do zero, one. So it's just the inverse of one, zero. And make sure to turn off your multi-line data and plug this in. So now we have, I'm just gonna move this here. So now we have our two done. As you can see, they're inverse of each other. Look like little Christmas lights. I plug in the panel. It's literally the inverse of this, so it actually includes the one. This one only includes the even numbers. This one only includes the odd numbers. Just happened to be coincidence like that. So, so what we can do now is do um, we if we draw a line right now. So you're like, okay, why don't we just draw a line real quick? It's going to just do this because a line only works from start to end point. So it's only going to do those diagonals, which is not what we want. That's like half of it. Let's say we wanted these two. Technically, you can draw two lines. You can start with this point and this point, and it will draw those points. But um, it's not. I mean, we might as well do it. The, you can do that way, but then you have to join the lines, and it gets a little confusing. So I, we can actually just do a polyline that goes through all of these. <laughs> So you're like, okay, let's just try a polyline real quick, right? Let's just try a polyline, right? And let's just put them in here. But you see, it just draws a straight line. It doesn't really do anything. And also, and you're thinking, okay, why don't we just plug both of these in here so it'll actually start to work. But as you can see, it just kind of only accepts one input. And the way for a node to accept two, imp for an input to accept two of them, all you have to do is hold this, drag the arrow into here. But as you can see, it just kind of rejects it. So what you want to do is hold shift while you're clicking on this part. Hold shift, and as you can see, it turns green. So as you can see, it's turning green. And I got my sticky keys because I was holding shift too long. And all you have to do, and you see it turns green, all you have to do is hold shift, keep holding shift, and let go of the click, and then let go of shift. And of course I have my sticky keys, so I'll tell them nothing's wrong. But it still doesn't really do it. Like, look, it doesn't even work, right? It just makes this weird Z. We don't want this. This is not what we want, right? That's not what we want. We want to make a zigzag. So, 
even though zigzag does start with Z. But anyways, we're going to delete that polyline, and we're going to now basically reorder the reorder the points into a way that it creates the zigzag. So instead of reading through top part and then bottom part, it'll read as top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom. And the way to do that is we're going to do something called a weave command. So this is it. It asks for a pattern. Uh, the pattern's already established, and it's usually what you would want. So it's two locally defined values at 0 and 1. Oh, oops, not what I meant to do. It says 0 and 1. We can change these via panels, but there's no point since it's already what we want it at. And it's asking for stream 0 and stream 1. So it's basically asking for uh, stream 0 and stream 1, which is just basically one set of points and another set of points. So right now, it's just saying, what a weave does, if we read this real quick, is we weave a set of input data using a custom pattern. So we're basically using a pattern in order to where the lines will kind of be guided. So let's do that real quick. We're going to do top part first into 0, and the bottom part into 1. And it's reading, see? Now it's reading like this. Now it's weaving them all in there. So it's re weaving this, 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 and so on and so forth. So it is working. When we click on it, it's actually highlighting only the points that are there. So it's basically reading that correctly now. So even if we throw in a panel, we can see it's actually working. So let's throw in a panel. So as you see, it starts from 0, 5, 1, 0, and 2, 5. So it's reading it like that, which is exactly what we want it as. <laughs> Now, you can change the pattern, like I said uh, before, but just leave it the way it is. That's exactly what we want it at. We want it at 0, 1, and the pattern usually is defined by the points that you've already selected, so it should be fine. So now all I have to do is do that polyline that we said before, and just plug this in. And now it's making that zigzag, which is exactly what we wanted, just that nice zigzag. <laughs> So yeah guys, um, that's pretty much it. If we look at a panel through the polylines, it just says one polyline curve because it's just that one curve we created. So yeah guys, that's pretty much it for this uh, part of the tutorial. Uh, we're going to go over one more thing. It's going to be a partition list. So we'll go over that in the next video. So yeah guys, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys have a great day. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Thank you.